This is one of the, I'm sure, many reasons why I think Americans come off as rude. Because this is, you know, we're so, uh, I don't know what you call it, babied here with we get what we want. If we want something different about a meal, if we want to send it back, if we want to chain stuff up, if we want half and half, pretty much we'll get that. Hello and welcome back. So today I'm going to be watching and reacting to USA versus Europe, Guide to Cultural Differences. For myself, I've been to Europe a, a couple times and I definitely see the cultural differences on my end. I would like to see from your side or anyone in Europe about Americans and just doing it all wrong. I'm sure I have made many mistakes. I'm sure my family have made many mistakes. We try to learn as much as possible before we before we come over, but um, some things some things we just had to learn while we we're there. So this will be a good guide for myself and any other fellow Americans that are watching. Let me know the differences that you have seen in both of our cultures. Well, let's hear this guide and see how accurate how accurate you think this guide is, and I please add anything else onto this. Hey there, we are guides from Prague, Czech Republic, and this is one of oh, our nice. favorite pups. But somebody just recently left a nasty review complaining about the fact that the waiter simply asked them, you want a beer? The waiter brought the beer, and then once the person was finished, they brought another beer, and this guy was complaining about it. What is he talking about? That's the best thing. Once you're finished with your beer, they bring another one. Uh, so for me, from the perspective of a Czech European, that's a good sign. For an American, that may be kind of weird or rude. First off, coming from <laughs> coming from the U.S., that's that thing happens, but for soft drinks. The more unhealthy, the more free uh, you get of it. It seems like, but yeah, soft drinks definitely. But typically, a waiter or waitress will come across and ask. Would you like another one or would you like round two? Some, something along those lines. They wouldn't just bring it to you like they do in the Czech Republic. So today we want to talk about cultural differences between our country, our city, and United States of America. And First of all, complain? you may be surprised what the beer looks like. Well, we have a video dedicated only to that. And second, when I walked in, I did differences between our country, our city, and United States of America. First of all, you may be surprised what the beer looks like. Well, we have a video dedicated only to that. And second, when I walked in, I didn't look at a beer menu or something that may be quite common in the United States where you have different beers on tap. Most pubs and restaurants in Czech Republic will have one brewery on tap wow. in the pub. So that's why you can walk in and just say, I'll have one. So I kind of like that. You walk into a pub and you don't have million choices. You just say one. In US, not only you have a choice of beers that are on tap, quite often there is five, 10. This is very true. No way would you have a place here, a restaurant with just one beer on tap. There's, I don't know if I've ever seen that before. I don't go to too many, but they're all like this. But I do like the fact that you could go to a place in Europe and just say, I'll take one, you know, something along those lines. That sounds pretty nice. And you know, you know the quality is gonna be fantastic. 20, but also they will ask you, do you want draft or bottle? What kind of question is that? The reason you go to a pub is to get beer on tap, to get draft beer. If you want bottled beer, you go to a supermarket. It's true. So for it's us, true. that's a big cultural difference <laughs> that quite often we beer. don't understand. Now a beer here costs 55 crowns. Let's call that $2.50 to round it up. Wow. If you go to a stadium, to a sports event here in Prague, it's gonna cost around $3. Oh. Well, nothing like that in US. If you no. go to a pub, it may cost five, six dollars. And you go to a stadium and it can cost 10, 15, even 20 dollars. Yes. Honza hates it. Whenever he goes to a sports event, he's always shocked with the price of the beer. I myself, when I travel to US, I usually don't go to uh, sports events, but I like amusement parks. And just recently, I visited Universal Studios. It was the most expensive beer I ever had <laughs> in my life. $15. I could not believe it. If you're shocked by this, yeah, that's that's very true. This is easy. You know, you go to the state fair, the little county fair, you go to amusement parks, you go to baseball games, yeah, 15 bucks, 12 bucks, you know, they're they're all over probably eight dollars, especially now. Easy. I think last time I went to a baseball game, it was something like 15 bucks per. We just got two of them, 30 bucks just like that. And it was canned. It was in a, it was in a can. So um, yeah, if you're if you're shaking your head, this this is uh, very true. Yeah, and I don't know why. Now I understand that going to amusement park, you don't go there for beer. You go there for the rides. But still, fifteen dollars. 
Dude, that, that was insane. <laughs> Why did I do that? Also, fun fact, I did not take a picture of the beer, but I did take a picture of the receipt. Now, the price of the beer, as I said at the amusement park, was $15. But I was asked to pay more than $16. Why? It said $15. Well, tax was not included. <laughs> what is this about? We go to a place, and I'm not only talking restaurants, but any store shop, and the price tag is the final price you pay. It says 55 here, it's gonna cost 55. They include the tax. Why don't you do that in US? It's just sad. It is sad. And I never noticed this before in Europe, it was weird. Yeah, we, we did not know about this fact that tax is added in, but it should be. So that's mind blowing to us, it's, it, it is weird. Any way for the US to squeeze out more money and for companies to seem cheaper, they're going to do it. But I do really wish that it was pretty much against the law, like it probably is in Europe. If, if you, you have to add tax, maybe someday. I mean, imagine me, I'm 11 years old, I have my first dollar ever, and I walk into a dollar store, looking forward to buy something for a dollar. I pick up the item, go to the register, uh, $1.50, fifty. Like, what? It's a dollar <laughs> store, everything costs a dollar, not dollar store plus tax. Now let's switch from yep. drinks to food. In any place, you can get some food, okay. right? Uh, mostly you pick something from the menu and no further questions will be asked. Well, in US, quite often they will ask you how you want to customize, do you want bacon, do you want that cheese, do you want this cheese, do you want this or that and that. It gets quite confusing for us. And you can imagine me being 11 years old in US, in New Jersey, first walking to a restaurant, ordering a burger, very <laughs> much looking forward to it. And they asked me, how do you want your burger done? I said, I don't know, very well done. <laughs> Thinking very that well. they would make it completely. Yeah, you can imagine what happened. They brought this black piece of meat that was unedible. And all my friends had a laugh about it. Now, to be fair, if you go to a restaurant in Prague nowadays uh, and you will have a burger, they will ask you how you want it done. But once again, the, the fact that you can customize anything at a restaurant in US is very uncommon for us here. So if you come to a pub or a restaurant in Czech Republic, don't expect that you can customize every single item on the menu. That's that's why there's a menu with things that you pick from. This is one of the, I'm sure, many reasons why I think Americans come off as rude. Because this is, you know, we're so, uh, I don't know what you call it, babied here with we get what we want. If we want something different about a meal, if we want to send it back, if we want to change stuff up, if we want half and half, pretty much we'll get that. It's very true in the US where the customer's always right. So they kind of do anything they can for the customers. So then when we go abroad, it comes off as very like we're, we're picky, which we are compared to, you know, it's a different culture. Of course we're picky. It's unfortunate that Americans don't understand that there's, other than the US, there are other cultures out there. In some ways I love it, great. I mean, you customize it exactly how you want, but me being not a picky person at all, I'll just take something off if I don't like it. They need a cultural class when people travel abroad for the first time. I really hope we didn't lose our subscribers from United States. We love you guys. Uh, no, so to, I love this. Uh, say something that we consider to be amazing in US that we don't have here is water. Free water at a restaurant, at a bar, anywhere. You sit down at a table and in US, you get a glass of water. Yes. Never happens in the Czech Republic ever. Not only that, if you ask for tap water, quite often they will say, no, 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 we don't serve tap water and you will get a tiny little bottle of water that you will pay for two, three, four dollars. It's ridiculous. I know a restaurant where I go to, and I will always say, can I get uh, tap water? And they're like, no, we can't do that. We can only sell you a bottle. <laughs> and I quite often say, I'll pay you the same price that I'll pay for the bottle for tap water. Like, no, we can't do that. Crazy. Yeah, I did notice that water is very different between the US and Europe and ice cubes. Everything, it's, it's well known in the US and probably just North America in general. We get ice cubes and chuck full of ice, ice cubes of everything. If you get a, uh, you know, soda out, you know, very American thing, you go to pretty much anywhere, a restaurant or fast food and you get a soda, it's like 80% full of ice, it seems like. And you have a, a little bit of liquid and it's just all ice, super cold. We love our ice here. 
we always get tap water. Sometimes they put big jugs of water on the table too for us to <laughs> refill ourselves, but there's people always coming around and topping your water off all the time throughout your whole meal. Whereas I did notice that in Europe, we will get bottled. What is very interesting to us Americans when we go to Europe is their sparkling water or carbonated water. If that's what you call it, if I'm remembering it correctly, that is very strange. Yes, it is here in the US, but pretty much you have to just go to the store and buy it. You'll never find it in restaurants or anywhere, but it seems really big in Europe. But that's one big difference. Quite strange for us Americans. I feel, I feel a little fancy when I drink that, to be honest. It's a fancy thing for us. Crazy. Now let's talk about service in restaurants and pubs because that may be oh a bit of a shock for you when you come to Prague. Uh, yes, quite often it is rude and not polite at all. That's also a huge difference for us when we go to US and um, a waitress <laughs> will come wow. to our table and she will introduce herself and she will smile and she will maybe recommend something from the menu. That would never happen here. I mean, it's changing, don't get me wrong. Uh, service is getting better. But if you go to like a local place, a dive bar, which I would consider this place to be, quite often they'd be grumpy and it takes a long time for them to get to know you. And after maybe a 20th visit, they will share a little smile with you. <laughs> Not like in US. First time visitor, oh, I love seeing coming you to our restaurant. My name is Wendy. Can I take your order? Hey, Wendy. Yeah. Speaking of Wendy, when I was first called darling or honey in a restaurant in US, I was like, they, she really loves me. She just called me darling. <laughs> I like that. The reason that they're different here is that tips are massive for them. I feel like they don't really get paid much at all, but they do share or keep the tips that they do make from their service. So if you're really bad, you're not getting good tips. You're not making a lot of money, but if you're fantastic, especially at a higher up restaurant, you make bank, you make a lot of money. It's all about that service. It's all about that customer's always right. Uh, that is a big difference here. Super over the top, nice. I mean, I, I like the bartender here, but he never calls me darling. I, I, let's let's make it stay that way, okay? We're tough guys. Even though the two of us consider the service Ooh. at places in the United States very good and very nice oh, and very good. polite, <laughs> there is one thing that we consider to be very rude, and that is, you're finishing your meal or maybe you're halfway through and suddenly a bill lands on your table. What is that? Uh -huh. Are you kicking me out? That would never happen here. Any business, restaurant, pub, coffee place tries to keep you in the place as long as possible. You're done with your meal, they'll offer you a dessert. You're done with your dessert, they will offer you coffee. You're done with your coffee, maybe you want to start over and have another appetizer. In other words, they want to keep you in as long as possible. You have to ask for the bill. In US, very often, you're halfway through, here's your bill. I'm like, well, maybe I want another something. No, 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 the bill is already on the table. Just weird. Speaking of the bill, let's dive into tipping. And that can create some big issues because that's a big cultural difference. Every new topic he brings up gets more and more of a difference between our cultures. It gets bigger and bigger, the mountain's growing. And here we go next into tipping. Once again, spot on with the, with the bill. I kind of learn to like it when the bill comes because then you could leave whenever. I know if you're not used to that, it'll seem like they're kicking you out. And honestly, they probably do because they want turnover, they want money. And the more people they kind of pump through, the more money, of course, and the more tips they make. But sometimes you'll have the bill and we'll stay there for another half an hour and everything. It's pretty normal. They just won't really come back. You know, it's just like you're concluded, your table's done and uh, they're out and about. On to tipping, on to tipping. In US, quite often we get asked, do you want to tip 15, 18, 20, 25%? Which for us is like, whoa, that's a lot. A quarter of the bill just tips uh, because it's a tip-based country or tip-based business. In Czech, that used to be very, very different. I mean, my dad would only round up the bill to the next higher number. If the bill was 99, he would round it up to 100. I believe most of our dads and mothers still do that. Nowadays, it's changing even here and tipping goes from 10% higher if you're satisfied with the service. If the service yeah. is really bad, some people will simply not tip. If that would happen in the US that you would not leave a single cent 
on a tip, I've experienced people running out of the restaurant and be like, what happened? What did we do wrong? Like, why did you not tip? So tipping is very, very different. And I'm curious what you will uh, say about that in the comments. Where, whatever country you're from, I want to read what's the average tipping in your country. Same, same. Now, this cultural difference is not only huge, but it's, I consider it to be evil. And that is packaging and garbage in general. I'm not talking about if you go to a place where it's a takeout or you go to a fast food. Yes, they put it in a paper bag, either if you're in US or here. But I'm talking about if you go to a restaurant and they create so much garbage, so much waste, even though you're at a restaurant. Quick yep. example. Mostly if you get a drink at a bar in the US, they put a napkin under it. So it soaks the moist that's running under it. Well, that's for one use only. Afterwards, they will throw away the napkin. How about they use coasters? Because you can reuse the coaster. And that's just one very simple example. Another one is if you order a ketchup at this place, they will bring it either a bottle, some places in the US do that too, or they put it in a um, ceramic cup that they clean afterwards. Not that they grab 20 ketchups and throw them next to your burger, or even in <laughs> McDonald's in Czech Republic, you pay for every single tiny wow. packaging of any sauce, any ketchup. So you think about if you want one or two. In US, uh, yeah, can I get some ketchup? Yep. Here you go, here's a million ketchups in <laughs> tiny little bags. No, don't do that. I mean, you guys are going all Michael Bay packaging. Like, hey, yeah, that's a plastic bag. Let's put it in a paper bag and let's put more packaging and pack it up. You want it to go? Yeah, let's pack it up more. Whew. <laughs> me meanwhile, in Europe, yeah, let's, let's get rid of plastic straws. They really destroy the universe. There's going to be one hell of a discussion under this video. I absolutely love you guys from US and I love going to US just so you know, we both do. I like the honesty though. I, I've always encouraged honesty, but just be polite about it. You know, I like a constructive criticism for any topic that we're, we're uh, talking about because that really promotes a discussion. We do love our packaging. Everything's packaged all the time. They'll always ask, oh, do you want to wrap that up? Some some restaurants even have like dog treats that you can take home and they'll package up some dog treat for them. You know, they just want to, once again, they want a good tip. They want a good review. They want people to come back. They want to flush people out really easily or quickly and get more money, more tips, more reviews, just pump them out and all in the meanwhile, they're packaging everything. They always ask, oh, do you need a box? Or how many boxes do you need? Then if you have enough boxes, they'll give you a bag for it. It's so much different than in Europe. I, I do know that. Even here in the US, we'll, at least my family, we'll see how much they package things. And it's just like so overdone, so extravagant. Like how do they even come up with this packaging method? Please don't cancel my Esther. Now let's drop the beer for a minute and let's talk about coffee and coffee culture oh, differences no. between USA and Europe. Right triggered here. already? Well, you'll get triggered more. Yes, in Europe, we do not consider this to be a cup of coffee. That's a gallon of coffee. <laughs> if it's more than a gallon, it's not coffee. This is a cup of coffee. By the way, shocker, they have a cup of coffee in this pup. Uh, it's served in a ceramic cup. It's this size. You have a plate under it. It makes that little noise when you put it down. You sometimes even get a spoon with it so you can mix your little espresso. And this is how you drink it. <laughs> Not a gallon. Doesn't fit in your car so you can drive and sip on your little coffee soup throughout the day. Big true, difference, true. big shocker for us when we go to places in US and they simply don't serve something like this. Hold your yes. horses. I know that coffee culture in the US is changing depending on which state you live in, if you live in a city and so on. But still mostly people think this is coffee and you cannot get this. It's sad for us Europeans. <laughs> Can I get a cup of coffee? You want Venti Grande, Grande XL, Grande XXXXL. Like the Italians drink it. Whoa, 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 whoa. Now this next cultural difference may sound weird, but I believe it should be addressed. And that is restrooms and toilet sizes uh, in restaurants and pubs. And I'm not talking about the actual seat size, but I'm talking about you have a big pub and there's one toilet. There's like one restroom for the entire pub where there's like hundreds of people. And that sounds horrible. the stalls where you can like sit to do number two are very like see-through. Like there's no privacy. Like there's no door at the bottom. Like if somebody peeks, they can see you. Yeah, it's kind of strange. And girls talk about that a lot. Both our girls talk about it, how like it's kind of weird that people can't really uh, see you. So that's a big difference. If there's a big pub here, 
It has many restrooms, many toilets. That looks super nice. Like that's what we would see in a very luxurious place. I mean, there's like coat hangers, hangers on the outside, mirrors everywhere, places to put items on top, candles, like goodness, is that really there? <laughs> yeah, you would never see that. Our, our restrooms here are extremely basic and huge holes, yeah, where you could pretty much see all the legs underneath. And it can, you know, uh, do the business people need and accommodate many people at the same time. And of course, the ones we mentioned are not the only cultural differences between our continents. There's many more. We can talk about uh, different units. We can talk about different forms of transportation, oh, how yeah. we move around cities and countries, how big are our cars and your cars, and many more topics. So let us know in the comments if you want us to cover more topics. And while you're there, please don't be mad at us. This was not made to insult you, only to give you perspectives on our culture habits and your cultural habits that we experience when we go over to your lovely continent that we love to visit, but sometimes we're just like, huh, that's weird. <laughs> yeah. We're the honest dudes from Prague. That dude's name is Honza. My name is Janek. We go by The Honest Guide, our channel full of content. So if you're planning to come to Prague, Europe, uh, check out our videos. We do scams, we show you beers, we show you restaurants, coffee places, and cultural differences. I'll see you next week. Stop it right here because this is so extremely true. Yeah, everything they said was spot on. So please expand upon this if he said anything or if you've traveled here to the US and saw it like, wow, this is weird. Or I did think that was strange how they did that. Uh, much more expensive, tax was crazy. Couldn't order a normal coffee, like a legitimate coffee or anything else. Add anything on that was not on this list because I know there are quite a bit and that's what makes these videos so interesting for me to watch and then later on read and join in the comment section because that's where I really learn the most. So if you've made it this far, thank you for joining. Thank you for watching. We'll do more of these because I love these differences and have a good rest of your day.